I was not ready to go. I stood in the airport watching as a group of kids who I had come to love as my own siblings wished me goodbye. And I just stood there wondering how three months could have gone by so fast. Um, Um, and I just stood there wondering how three months could have gone by so fast. You see, I had just had one of the most transformative experiences of my entire life, spending the summer as an intern at a home for orphaned children in Mexico, a home which I had visited twice before in short-term mission trips and which I will be speaking to you about today. The organization is Niños de Mexico, or Children of Mexico, and while I call Niños a home, it is actually five homes, sped between the Mexico City suburbs of San Vicente and Texcoco, where 71 kids deemed unadoptable by their government are given permanent homes. The institution also operates two dormitories for those 18 years and older, giving the kids a place to go when they reach adulthood. And it was just announced Niños will begin oversight of a new home in the Mexican state of San Luis Potosi. Now, you may be asking, uh, that's, that's really good, you know, what they're doing in Mexico, but we have our own problems here. Why should I support an organization there? Fair question. Have you ever heard the saying, a threat to freedom anywhere is a threat to freedom everywhere? Well, I believe a threat to children anywhere is a threat that should concern people everywhere because <coughs> compassion transcends geography. So even though these kids are hundreds of miles away from us, their plight is no less meaningful or worthy of our attention because of where they're located. With that in mind, I encourage you to support Niños de Mexico because the work they're doing in the greater Mexico City area, extending physical, educational, and spiritual care to orphaned, homeless, and abandoned children is a much needed and vital work. And I want to bring to your attention two specific ways you can help. The first is sponsoring a child for $25 a month, which goes toward the cost of feeding, schooling, and housing. And the second is getting your church or organization to make a general sponsoring commitment to Niños. Think about how you can help as I outline four different ways the work of Niños is so important. I begin with the primary way Niños carries out its mission, and that is establishing stable, loving homes for the children in their care. The reference work, International Clinical Psychology, published in 2007 and edited by sociologist Dr. Jan Marie Fritz, puts the number of homeless children living in Mexico City on the streets at upwards of 13,000. These are kids without homes, opportunities for schooling, protection from exploiters, and more. And Niños de Mexico takes in these kids. The Niños home I was at during my, uh, during my internship was called Esperanza, or Hope, and it functioned just like any other home. It had house parents, uh, daily chores, playtime, friendly banter. Uh, he took my toy. Well, he hit the soccer ball at my head. Can you tell I was in a house full of all boys? <laughs> A loving atmosphere permeates all the Niños homes because they don't just house children. They create family, which is what children really need. Imagine yourself without your own family. Secondly, Niños seeks to further child education by operating a K-12 through school. When kids come to Niños out of traumatic situations, they are often behind in their formal education. Furthermore, severe income inequality in Mexico meant in 2010, 19% of youth between the ages of 15 and 19 were not enrolled in an educational program or working. And if that's not bad enough, according to Dr. Fritz's work, 12%, a full 12% of the kids living on the street in Mexico City are totally illiterate. Therefore, Niños has established a bilingual institute that allows house parents, teachers, and health professionals to address the needs of each child, moving them toward relative educational competency and allowing for further academic success. And currently, two students, Jose Romero, 14, and Isaac, 15, actual friends of mine, finished their junior high school studies early and are now preparing for their high school entrance exams. A remarkable feat. But I wonder how we'd be if we didn't even have an education. Thirdly, Niños operates a medical clinic with a licensed medical doctor on staff as well as staff psychologists. Again, going back to Dr. Fritz's book, 70% of all of the Mexico City street kids abuse illicit drugs and of the 50% that are sexually active, 43% began that activity between the ages of 7 and 14. It is no surprise then that UNICEF's 2005 literature review of the situation of adolescents in eight Latin American countries and the Caribbean found that 90% of all of Mexico City street kids had been sexually abused. 
And the executive director of Nino, Steve Ross, tells me that 90% of the students in his institution's care have been emotionally, physically, or sexually abused. This is no joke. And the medical staff at Ninos is committed to working with the children to address these problems. As proof of that, the medical doctor on hand was actually one of the first children ever admitted to Ninos in the 1960s, who went on to study medicine and came back to give back to the organization. Finally, Ninos as a Christian organization is committed to church planting, community outreach, and tending not just to the bodies of their kids, but also their spirits. While Ninos requires no profession of faith of any child, they are moved by God's love as they hold to the words of Jesus Christ, that whoever welcomes a child in my name, welcomes me. And I know I speak for the organization when I say that Christ is truly at the center of all they do. Now, we've covered a lot. So in summation, I've argued Ninos de Mexico merits your support because the work they do in the greater Mexico City area Educating, empowering, and housing nearly 500 kids over 48 years is a vital and much needed work. And as someone who has seen firsthand the impact they are making in the lives of so many kids, honestly, I can tell you it's worth it. If time permitted, I could tell you so much about my brothers in the Esperanza house. There's Edwin, who has the cutest laugh of any kid you've ever heard and cannot frown for more than two seconds without, excuse me, cannot smile for more than two seconds without breaking into but he can't frown. He, he, as soon as he frowns, he just starts smiling. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And then there's uh, Moises, whose musical tastes range from Lincoln Park to Bob Marley, and who has wisdom that far outstrips his 15 years. Or Hernan, wicked smart, and whose favorite thing, I kid you not, was to sneak under my bed or in my closet and scare me half to death. This went through this process every single day. I just love those kids. However, to some people, they would look at them and see just the products of an unjust and cruel world, but not me. I see them as living examples of the awesome power of God's love and hope. And I pray that you will be inspired to action by their lives like they have inspired me. Thank you very much.